Hi, Mr. B here again, and today's topic is accommodations. And the first thing we want to know is what is an accommodation? And my picture shows it well because an accommodation is a helping hand. It is something that is designed to help you learn easier. As a student with a disability, there might be some things that are more difficult for you than a student that doesn't have a disability. An accommodation is designed to level the playing field. So let's say you have trouble reading. An accommodation that might work for you to level the playing field would be to have books on tape provided for you. Now it's important for you to know that as a student with a disability, you have a legal right to accommodations that are appropriate and necessary. And I'd like to stress those two words, appropriate and necessary. An accommodation is appropriate if it levels the playing field for you. It might be inappropriate if it gives you an unfair advantage over other students. So let's say that you have difficulty reading. It would be appropriate to read the test for you. However, it may be inappropriate to cut down the number of test questions you have to do or to tell you to just answer 10 of the 20 questions and grade you on that. In a similar way, an accommodation should be necessary. One student may need the test read to him or her and, what, and another student may not. So don't be upset if you see something happening in a classroom and you're not getting the same accommodation. It's important that you realize that and that you accept it, that accommodations are appropriate and necessary. So if I can find my mouse here, where'd he go? There he is, okay. So let's talk about what an, an accommodation isn't before we talk about anything else. An accommodation is not something that's just designed to help you get better grades, but that might happen. You're still going to have to go to class, you're still going to have to do the work, and you're still going to have to work hard. I said this earlier, but I believe that it bears repeating. Accommodations are designed to help level the playing field. The other thing that accommodations aren't is universal. Not everyone requires the same accommodation. So while you may see a teacher doing something for a student, say reading the test to them, as I said earlier, don't get upset if the teacher doesn't extend you the same courtesy. Each student has his or her own needs. I'm going to list some accommodations here, but please be aware that this is just a short list. People have written entire books on accommodations for students with special, special needs. The first one I've listed is extra time. I think this may be the most important. Perhaps you need more time to get assignments done or even take tests, and extra time would really benefit you. I've rarely run into a student that doesn't benefit from extra time. Next, perhaps you'd like to test in a separate room that has less distractions. Would having notes be provided for you helpful? Would that be helpful? It may be if you're in a lecture-based class and you can't keep up taking notes. It may be very helpful if you have terrible handwriting or if you have very difficult time writing. How about shortened assignments? Books on tape? Sitting at the front of the class? Using a calculator? Using a computer? The last one, using a computer, is something a lot of my students require as an accommodation because they have poor spelling skills. And using a computer allows them to run a spell check. The question then is, what accommodations do you need? And it's important that you provide input. You know your strengths and weaknesses, and you know best what you need. Your special ed teacher probably isn't in every class with you, so it's up to you. And once you know what those are, tell your special ed teacher or your case manager. And next, attend your IEP meetings, because at those meetings you'll be able to say, you know what, I think this accommodation would be helpful for me. If you don't go, you're leaving it in someone else's hands. And that's what self-advocacy, this series, is all about. Sticking up for your rights. Now before we close out this podcast, I thought we'd look at a couple websites that might be helpful for you to get more information. I've listed their addresses here, 
and we'll take a look at each of them one at a time. The first website I'd like to look at with you is LD Online. And once you get to the home page, if you type in accommodations into their search box, you get a list of results and let's look at the second one here and so we've come to a site that goes back and talks to us again about what are accommodations and how does a child receive them and what I want you to look at are the examples and there are some examples for pre presentation and for response and for timing and for setting test scheduling and others so there's, there's some great information here. The second one I want to look at with you is LD Pride. And this one's probably my favorite one. And I want to show you why. So we're going to scroll down. There's a lot of information here that you can read through if you choose to. But way at the bottom, oops, went too far, is an accommodations worksheet. And there are three pages of this. And I really like to do this with my students because there are things. So in the classroom I might need more visual instruction, examples and demonstrations. And so you'd put a check mark by each one of these and then you could go to your special ed teacher and say these are the things that I think would help me. Here's another one on assignments, extra time, breaking big projects into smaller units. And then the last one is on tests, practice tests. Again, extra time testing in a quiet place. All of my students like to check this one, open book or take home tests, which would be great in an ideal world. But again, we're looking at accommodations that are appropriate and necessary. So that's my podcast on accommodations. Accommodations are very important, and it's important that you get the ones that you need. Again, if you can provide input, that helps your special ed teacher, and it helps all your teachers because you know what you need. I'm Mr. B. Thanks for watching.